your biology class, you may do an experiment looking at temperature and how it has an effect on enzyme activity. So the effects of temperature on an enzyme, today we're looking at renin. The background information about renin. Now renin is a protein or an enzyme that is also known as chymosin. Renin is an enzyme found in rennet. Rennet is a complex of enzymes found in mammalian stomachs. What it actually does is it curdles or clots milk products. So it's produced by newborn plant eating animals in the lining of the stomach to curdle the milk they ingest, allowing a longer residence in the bowels and better absorption in the body. It is widely used in the production of cheese. The hypothesis. So this is your experiment that you're looking at. We have got here two test tubes filled with milk, okay? Three mils of milk. And you can see that the milk is liquid there. You have the test tubes turned on the side. So the milk is still a liquid. So the hypothesis, when renin is heated or cooled outside its optimum temperature range, the enzyme will denature and therefore not perform its function of clotting the milk. Materials. I have got it set out in the table form, but you may want to make dot points in your book and list it down your page. So we need ice, and the reason why we need ice is to actually cool the environment for the enzyme to slow its functioning. We also have renin, which is our enzyme. We have nine test tubes. There's three test tubes in each environment. So three in an icy environment, three in about 40 degrees, and three in 80 degrees. We have three mils of milk in each test tube. We need test tubes racks to hold the test tubes. Um, a stopwatch so we can record the rate of reaction and how long it takes. Thermometers to measure the actual environment temperature. It's good to keep it consistent, so you do need a thermometer in every environment. Um, we need beakers. We need marking pens to mark the beakers, um, which will actually hold our test tubes. And an 80 degree water bath, as well as a 40 degree water bath. Now your method may be written something like this. It needs to be written in steps, like step one, step two, step three. You need to label all test tubes first so that you don't get confused during the experiment. So the temperature, you need three test tubes with ice, three test tubes with 40 degrees Celsius, and three test tubes with 80, deg 80 degrees Celsius. You add three mils of milk to each test tube and put in appropriate beaker for five minutes or until milk has reached desired temperature. Check milk is at the desired temperature, around 0, 40 and 80 degrees. So you must make sure the milk is at your desired temperature before you put your renin in. You put three drops of renin in each test tube and you try and do it at the same time. So if you're working in groups, try and do it together so you can make sure that all of the drops are put in at the same time. Observe and record the amount of clotting. If any, you may not get clotting in some environments. Draw a graph to show your results. Now your results. What do you expect will happen to the test tubes in each temperature at zero degrees, 40 degrees, and 80 degrees Celsius? Press pause here and have a guess. Okay, we can see here that at 40 degrees, you can see that the top test tube has clotted and the bottom test tube, the milk is still quite liquidy. The bottom test tube has either come from a zero degrees or 80 degrees environment, but the top test tube, the milk is 100% clotted. It is not liquid at all. And this has happened in the 40 degrees water bath. Your results should show zero percentage clotting in both zero and 80 degrees water baths. The milk and enzyme in the 40 degrees water bath should have between 85% to 100% clotting. After recording the results, you can then take the milks from both the zero degrees and the 80 degrees water baths and place them in the 40 degrees water bath. What do you predict will happen? Pause here to have a think about your prediction. Okay, the excessive heat will permanently denature the enzyme. So the milk coming from the 80 degrees water bath will not function in most cases. So the top here, the test tube has clotted milk and that's with 40, clotted in 40 degrees when removed from cold. So if you do remove the test tube from cold, it will still clot the milk. You may find that a, the excessive cold may temporarily alter the active site or just slow down the functioning dramatically. 
However, it should perform its function to clot the milk. It may not clot the milk at 100%. So it may clot it at just 85%. You might find there's a little bit of milk there that's still liquid. This means that with excessive temperature, enzymes denature. Excessive heat, they will denature and permanently denature. Um, they're unable to be restored back to normal function. With excessive cold, some enzymes are able to perform when they return back to optimum temperature. However, they may not be 100% functional. Your results could be in a table something similar to this. So you can see here we've got zero degrees, zero clotting in each test tube. You can see here at 40 degrees, we have 100% in each test tube. And at 80 degrees water bath, you have zero percent clotting in each test tube. Your discussion. Did you achieve your hypothesis? Are your results valid? Could this experiment be improved? Name any safety precautions you followed. Now with this experiment, I already have one way that we can improve it. The way that we can improve it is actually have a test tube in each water bath with only milk and no renin put inside. That way we can actually see that the milk won't clot anyway if it does not have the renin enzyme. Your hypothesis was achieved. However, you need to explain in your discussion that enzymes that are in an extreme cold can, re can return back to optimum temperature and be restored and have some functioning. It may not be 100%, but you can still mention this in your discussion. In your discussion, it is also important to mention your actual results as examples. For example, the milk that was in the freezing temperature and then returned to optimum temperature of 40 degrees was able to clot the milk at 85%. This demonstrates the enzyme was able to function almost at its full capacity. That's it for the temperature and enzymes. Our next experiment that we're looking at is pH and enzymes. Thank you.